Hi guys, so um, I really was hesitant in coming out with this video because I really wanted to process this. I really wanted to, as you can see with the title, um, yes, I am diagnosed with BPD. hesitant in coming out with this video because I really wanted to process it and I really wanted to I got diagnosed last year um and last year actually I was diagnosed like in the hospital and um in the psych hospital um because i was in a psych hospital and i got diagnosed like the third or fourth day that i was there like a therapist came to me and like she told me that i was diagnosed with bpd and honestly i was really like um shocked at like the diagnosis i didn't not i did not see that coming like at all but um and I, I was hesitant because I wanted to process it and also because, you know, nobody likes getting, you know, like a new diagnosis, you know, it's really hard and it's very frustrating and also sometimes, you know, new diagnosis comes with, you know, more medication or, you know, like more, um, like more diagnosis sometimes leads to like more medication, you know, and so I really wanted to um, process it, but yeah, I was diagnosed like last year. Um, and BPD, what BPD is, is a, it's a condition characterized by difficulties in regulating, regulating emotion. These difficult these difficulties lead to severe mood swings, impulsivity, and instability, poor self-image, and stormy personal relationships. Um, so, the biggest thing for me, like with having BPD, the biggest thing for me is fear of abandonment. And honestly, like to go a little bit further into that... When I was 13 years old, um, life wasn't peachy, life wasn't like, like, you know, like peaches and cream, but like, it was okay, like at, at like that time, you know, it was, it was okay, it wasn't perfect, it was okay, but when I was 13 years old, I had a fear of like abandonment, and like, I didn't set, like, I was seeing a therapist at the time but I did not say anything about it I did not say nothing about like my thoughts on that I didn't tell my grandma like my thoughts on that I didn't say anything and like I um I just didn't say nothing because I thought it was just like anxiety but I was thinking to myself back then I was thinking I was like why am I having a fear of abandonment, you know, at 13 years old? Like, I mean, you know, like, like, in reality, like, at the time, like, nobody was leaving me. Like, nobody was, you know, I wasn't, like, in danger, like, at the time. Like, so I didn't understand what I was feeling. I didn't understand that at all. But... I'm going to say later when I got the diagnosis and when I was told everything, what goes into this, what goes into, you know, like having this is like, I was like, oh, that makes sense. Like that makes total sense of what I'm feeling. And so, um, that was that, um, distorted image, distorted and unstable self image. Um, it can affect moods and values, opinions, goals, and relationships. Distorted and unstable self-image. I feel like 
the distorted self image um i really feel like that i really feel that that ties into my eating disorder um my i have anorexia and i really feel that that goes towards my eating disorder and also because i was bullied when i was younger um and honestly like you know, when you get bullied by people, when you get bullied by people, you start to, you start to believe what they say about you that's true, um, but in reality, you know, the people that does bully people, um, they're hurting, and so they want to hurt you because they're hurting or something's going on in their life or, you know, they're, they're hurting. And so, like, I mean, hurting people hurt people. So, um, but I really think that has to do with, like, my eating disorder. Impulsive behaviors that can, that can have dangerous outcomes. Okay, really, um, the impulsivity, the impulsive, um, being impulsive, um, I, uh, trigger warning, <laughs> uh, trigger warning, yes, um, the impulsive thoughts, um, I really don't want to get deep down into those, but like the impulsive thoughts is, I mean, it's always negative thoughts. The impulsive thoughts that I have is always negative, um, like whether it be, you know, like self-harming behaviors, you know, or whether it would be, you know, like, like, like doing something weird and crazy that, you know, will probably get you hurt or you know or well should I put it well I already said trigger warning so but like for an example I would I would like like when I was younger I would walk the streets at night and it would be like two or three o'clock in the morning and I would not advise anyone I would not advise anyone to do that, okay? I do not recommend that, okay? Stay inside the house, okay? And stay safe with your mom and dad or either with your family. Please stay inside and please stay safe. Please. Um, but, yeah, um, and I was I was on meds I was on meds not for like solely for like BPD but like I was on meds but it wasn't like enough like for me and so but um yeah those are but the impulsive thoughts like not gonna get in too deep about that but the impulsive thoughts are always negative you know whether it's like self-harm or whether it's you know like um you know like bad thoughts about you know you know hurting yourself or you know like hurting myself or whatever you know it's always like those negative thoughts um yeah, um, self-harming, yeah, self-harming behavior, suicidal thoughts, um, periods of intense depressed mood, irritability, lasting a few hours to a few days, so, yeah, periods of intense depressed mood, um, yeah, so, basically, for me, it's, it's really, like, highs and lows with the depression, um, like, my high, you know, I can get really happy, you know, and, like, really, really, it, it, it's really, having BPD is, I will tell you that it's more intense, um, and I really feel like 
it is more intense with BPD. And you might say, oh, well, Asia, you know, you have major depression. Well, you know, like, isn't that intense because it's major depression? Well, I mean, I feel like the BPD, the PTSD, and the major depression combined, um, I feel like it makes it more intense. Um, because I do have PTSD and also a uh, major depression as well, and it makes it more intense. Um, so, yeah. Um, I can, ha yeah, like I said, I can have like really like, like I can have highs, but I can also have lows. And like when I get to those lows, like it's really, um, it's really, really like low. Like I can hit like a really low, like depressed state where I'm just like, you know, down, like really down, like for like a couple of days or like it can even last longer than that um I mean but yeah it's really of like highs and lows um chronic feeling of boredom and emptiness yeah um the emptiness I would think the emptiness goes hand in hand with the depression um it's you know it's really more of like, you know, like the emptiness, more of like the negative thoughts of, you know, like, it, like with any mental illness, you know, including BPD, you know, I mean, it can make you feel like you're alone, you know, and which is not true, you know, but it can make you feel like you're alone and it can make you feel like you're you're like there's no hope you know but there is hope you know um and it it really sucks and um it's really it, it really makes you feel really isolated um and i feel like that's with any mental illness though you know um like you know the those thoughts or those voices you know will make you feel alone you know and will make you feel isolated you know and will make you feel depressed you know and everything but um i would tell you today do not listen to those thoughts and do not you know listen to the you know depression voice or you know um just don't just don't because that voice that voice is lying um you are not alone and um you are loved um dissociative feelings um disconnecting from your thoughts or sense of identity um so dissociation, um, I really wanted to make like a separate video about this, but honestly, I'm going to just put it in this video. Dissociation, honestly, I've been like recently, like, I mean, like a couple of months ago, I just started like, like experiencing like some type of that, um, Honestly, all I can, like, tell you, like, how I feel, like, when I go into those, like, like, episodes is, like, <laughs> like, I just feel that I'm, like, not myself. Like, I'm, like, not in my body, that I'm, it feels numb, and, like, everything around me, like, is not real. Like, that's how, that's how it feels. And, like, it's so weird. It's so freaking weird. Like, I mean, it, like, when I, it's, it's, it, it's like, the honest, like, I honestly, 
it feels like a zap in your brain that's how it feels like i don't know maybe different people like feel different ways when they experience something like that but that's that's the best way that i can describe it i mean that's the best way that i can like feel like that i can like describe that because i just started like feeling that way like a couple of months ago and like my therapist told me that that's kind of a way to like block out trauma it's it's kind of like a confusing thing but like that's what she told me that it's it's like a it's it's a thing what you go through that you it's like a trauma response like you like it's like blocking out your trauma or, or something like that but like it just feels so weird like when I go through that because it's like I feel like I'm not in my body I feel like I'm not in my body and I feel like numb and like I feel like like it's like a zap in your brain like whoa like um yeah but also um causes um the causes of bpd can be genetic and it also can be environmental factors as well um i believe that i got bpd from environmental factors um especially environmental factors um which basically is you know like basically trauma you know um and you know physical abuse you know and um i definitely got it from um environmental trauma i don't know anyone in my family that i know of i don't know anyone in my family that has bpd that has that has a diagnosis of bpd i don't know anyone in my family that has that so um but i do have mental illness in my family but i don't have specifically as i know of i don't have specifically bpd like in my family but other diagnosis of mental health but not bpd um and um also um i also found myself to um get attached to um like a favorite person i guess or whatever um i really have to be careful with getting attached with like different like therapists and everything you know because it's like you know i when it's time for discharge you know i really you know like the therapist really like that therapist you know and then um i have to discharge from them and it's a little bit hard for me because um they understood me and I finally found a therapist that can understand me and that could under you know that could that I clicked with you know what I mean that you know that that really like that understood me and I feel like it's really um I feel that it's really hard to find that um and I feel like that's part of why it's so difficult um, especially if they're, like, a favorite therapist, um, also, um, my therapist told me that she wants me to get into DPD, DPT therapy, <laughs> tongue twister, DPD therapy, which is dialectal behavioral therapy, um, she wanted to get me into that um but i haven't um got dpd therapy um dbt i mean 
DBT, dialectal behavioral therapy. Um, hello. Um, so, um, yeah, but anyway, um, I just wanted to do this little video. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, just comment down below and I will answer them. And, um, I will see you guys in the next video.